So what about R? Sometimes when people are learning the ideal gas law, they ask, OK, look, here's this number. I know that I can get it out of a textbook or off Wikipedia or whatever, but where did the number actually come from? I'm going to show you that right now. So I'm going to take the ideal gas law, PV equals nRT, and I'm going to rearrange it to solve for R. So we're going to get R equals PV divided by nt. So in order to solve for r, we need to know the pressure, volume, number of moles, and temperature of a particular sample of gas. Well, you know, we could measure them, and we could do that with a gas tank or something. But there's a shortcut. Remember Avogadro's law? Avogadro's law we use when we're doing moles in gas. And it says that at STP, which is 1.00 atm, and 0 degrees Celsius, one mole of any gas takes up 22.4 liters. So let's take the ideal gas law rearranged here and just plug the values from Avogadro's law into it, right? So we can get R, just assume that we're at STP and we have 22.4 liters of gas, all right? So at STP, we have 1.00 atm times a volume of 22.4 liters and one mole of gas is going to take up that much space. And it's 0 degrees Celsius. We always want to use Kelvin. We add 273 to the degree Celsius, so it's going to be 273 Kelvin. Okay? So when we do that math, the number that we get is 0 0.082051. Now we go through three significant figures in each of these. So the guys at the front are not significant, but this one is, this one is, and this one is. We look next door to the five. Do we round up or keep it the same? We round up. And check out what we get, 0 0.0821. Now, we didn't cancel out any of our units here. So the units for the final answer are going to be the exact same ones that they were in the, in the original problem. So it's going to be this, ATM times liters divided by moles times Kelvin. It matches perfectly. Now, the other R's we can get in the exact same way. Remember uh, these conversion factors for gases. So what I'm going to do is I can set up this R equals PV divided by NT. And I can solve, for example, for kPa. Instead of one atmosphere, I'm going to put in 101.3 kPa. Check it out. I do this math, and I get 8.31. Or I could take millimeters of mercury, 760, plug that in instead of 1 atm. I go through, and I get 62.4 millimeters of mercury. So that quickly shows you the math that you can do to find out where R came from in the first place.